all right welcome to the video y'all we are going to be packing stuff and uh this is a new series i'm going to try out we're going to put together a bunch of orders from a bunch of days all into one video one big packing video and i'm planning on doing these uh fairly regularly first thing we have is this phil's garage yellow ferrari and uh this is a higher price car i would normally maybe use let me show y'all one of well this one's already made up on a lower value car i might use an 864 box if it would even fit with these protectors these cars are pretty tight and i'm really kind of concerned that any kind of dent the box might withstand um, could potentially damage the car so i want to give it a little more space than that because this car it'll show on the screen but this car i think is 125 dollars sale so instead of using one of those, I'm going to use a 1086. And we are going to end up resizing, resizing this box down a little bit. Go ahead and taper up. This gives us the, using a little bit larger box, it, it is going to make it probably a little bit heavier, but not much. I found they typically will ship at like a, a 12 ounce rate whenever I pack them like this. And that's absolutely, that's just, that's fine. If I used a smaller box and they didn't have a protector, like a, a lower value Hot Wheel, then it would probably be more like eight ounces. So and what I like to do, I'll put it in there first. I'll grab my, I'll use this resizer. And I like to resize them, not only to make the box a little smaller, but because when you resize them like this, the box actually becomes stronger because the sidewalls aren't as high, so it's less likely that it can get dented from the side. It gets way stronger whenever it's shorter like that. But yeah, um, I have my bubble wrap. I just put a little paper in there. Float that, I think it's gonna be good just like that. And if you choose to leave, yeah, that's good. If you choose to leave all this extra car, you could cut some of that cardboard up or off. Like if I was trying to make, make a weight, one thing I could do, I could cut right here and here, fold those sides in first like this, and then fold these like that. But in this case, I'm probably just gonna leave all the cardboard on here. I'm probably just gonna wrap it like that. Let me see what it weighs. I'm curious. Yeah, see, it's 0.66, so it's it's gonna ship at a uh, 12 ounce rate. My scale is kind of funky like that. I got a, good, a great deal on it. I've had it for years. I paid 50 bucks for it. It's a Mettler Toledo. Like that that scale was probably like a $500 scale when it came out. But it displays in fraction fractional um, pounds instead of pounds and ounces. So uh, yeah, you see, so 0 0.66 times point times 16 will give you the actual like ounces. So, um, yeah, this is ready to go. Okay, we actually have, um, we actually have three cars that are going to get packed like this exact same way. So, this is turbine time, turbine time probably. Same deal. It's a $100 Hot Wheels. I'm using a 10, 1086 box here. And it's going to be the same exact thing. 
so I'm not gonna not gonna talk too much on this one. Just gonna focus and pack. I can leave my little thing set up just like it was. You know that height is gonna work out. Pieces of wrap. I have had people comment on the way I use my box knife about how it's kind of dangerous with it. It may appear to be, ooh, I almost cut myself. It may appear to be dangerous, but the truth is, uh, I never hurt myself with that box that box knife never happens the most dangerous thing on this bench is actually these tape dispensers like this one has a guard on it which I don't use but it, like if I'm coming across to grab something I've done this a, a bunch of times and then I graze my hand across the little cutters on the end of these tape things ouch but the only time I've ever cut myself with a box knife or box recycle is about five years ago. I was cutting or something like a big box and I was cutting up and then the box came out of the knife came out of my hand, fell down and landed directly into my calf. <laughs> I've still got a pretty, uh, pretty gnarly scar. It was pretty bad. Blood was pouring out of my leg. I probably should have gotten stitches. I'll try My sock was full of blood. It was pretty bad. All right, that one's done. Okay, next up is this American Girl doll. And I'm going to go ahead to probably make her a little shorter if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and just ship her like this. And that's going to require a little bit of a resize here. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Let's see, I want... I want the box to be... Uh, 18 and a half. 18 and a half will do it. So I'm going to mark it up. On both sides. Two and a half. And I'm gonna swap out for bought this bought this vintage T square at an estate sale. Paid two dollars for it. And I just love how it's wood and it's like well worn or used and now I'm using it Get my little lines and then we're gonna perforate on those lines a little box stretcher technique here and then we just have to fold <laughs> it works better if you fold bring it back and then go that way that's fine and that's good okay and we just need to cut up our seams if y'all can see this or not I'm working kind of high there it'll it'll make sense once I do this okay And the reason you're going to see me on this kind of stuff, resize boxes, we sell, uh, we sell everything. So it's, it's not like we have a lot of, a lot of standard size items we deal with all the time. 
Occasionally we will, but most days as an everything eBay seller, we have just like a wide variety of shapes and sizes of items and it would be almost impossible for us to stock the exact size boxes we need every time. I don't want to stock, I don't want to stock more than like 10 different boxes maybe, something like that. It just takes up too much room. So it's better for me, or for us, if we just stock a few boxes that we can adapt to whatever we need. In this case, this is a Home Depot Extra Small. I usually like to keep a lot of those on hand. You can see now we're, we're good to go. Um, the only other thing I need to do though is I'm going to resize this way too. Let's see how low I want to go here. I think about there is probably good. Alright, get this sucker resized. So this is a reshape and a resize. And I'm probably going to be cutting off a good bit of flap. No, we're not going to need any of this. Keep these flat pieces to use for packing other stuff, reinforcing or whatever. All right. Now let me see how these are going to do. Okay, these are going to be just fine now. There we go. All right. Almost there. We're in the home stretch, y'all. This is one of the more I think we have a couple of packs I'm going to do today that are a little more involved like this. Some days I have a lot of these kind of packs. Some days I don't I hardly have any. Some days they're like super, super simple, basic packs. I'm not even using bubble wrap on her. I don't think it's necessary. This paper will be fine. dropper in there put a little more paper on top okay thank you card it and one other thing to note whenever doing a pack like this is how long is your package because look we're at 19 if you go over 22, you run into uh, length surcharge. I want to say on, don't quote me here. I think, I believe ground advantage is $4 surcharge from 22 to 30 inches or 22 to 28, one of the two. I'd have to sit down and Google it. Okay. All right, I think we're about ready. The only other thing I'm going to do here, I'll reinforce where I scored. Just to kind of help make sure there's not a failure at those points. Okay, there we go. There's a custom, custom made little American Girl box. Perfect. Okay, next up, this is the one, this is the pack of the day for me. This is a $75 Grogu signed print. Really cool. Got to make real sure it doesn't get bent. Uh, we have some other considerations too here. The, the print itself is inside of these borders, see, which is good. That gives us a little bit of buffer. Like if, if something would happen, we don't want anything to happen to it, but something would happen to this corner, say, probably it's not going to affect this, but we're still going to pack it really well. So this outer is 20 this dimension here is 20 inches long which means i i've got two inches an inch on either side i can play with so what i'm planning on doing i can't use this whole thing because that would be 24 inches i'd be oversized 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it like right here. I'm going to cut uh, two and a half inches off of two of these boxes. Okay, so let me go ahead and measure this out. And this is going to be a little bit of a long pack, but that's fine. Let's see, two and a half here. I'm going to have my T-square out again. I just wish the T-square was a little bit longer, but it, it'll get there. It'll work fine. So I'll just mark that up. And we're going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this strip out of, off of here. doesn't have to be absolutely perfect okay and we're going to do the same thing again with an identical box just, I'll just use this this will be fine two and a half and I don't know exactly where I'm going here <laughs> But I have packed, I have flat pack stuff around this size plenty of times, so it'll work out. Okay, the main thing I do is I just try and use a lot of cardboard to protect it. I'm doing kind of a half cut the first time, break it because I don't want to cut. My bench already looks bad enough, I don't want to cut. Too many lines into the bench top okay so now we have those done and kind of my thinking here go like this and this and then the grab the print take a look we're gonna do like this and we're gonna do like this this will be this print will be sandwiched in here okay and then on both ends we're going to fold these ends like this tape it up and then these other ends we're going to fold like this and then we're going to do the same thing on this other side if that makes sense Hopefully it does. Or do I want to come all the way around? I might come all the way around with both of these. Let me see. I feel like that might be better. Yeah, I'm going to do it like that. This is not, this is a, <laughs> this is not something I do often. So whenever I do something like this, kind of flying by the seat of my pants. But ultimately I just know Trying to get plenty. Oh yeah, this one's gonna have to fold this way. Just trying to get plenty of cardboard. Yeah, that'll work great. That'll work good. Around this thing, and I don't want it to be too bendy in the middle. And whenever I set up this listing. This pack's going kind of long. Whenever I set up this listing, I anticipated that. I made it a two-pound ship. There we go. All right. Put a big old piece of tape across yeah. here. We're going to use a ton of tape on something like this. All right. Bring a piece here. Sorry if I'm not really narrating well here. I'm trying to focus on the task at hand. This is the... Most days I'll have one pack that is the one I'm kind of dreading a little bit. And this is the one today. Okay. 
but then whenever I get done I do feel I do feel a sense of satisfaction which is nice we're gonna double check our dimensions when we get done too make sure I didn't go over okay. good about that don't feel good about that Feel like this is a beautiful package like whenever someone sees this coming they're gonna be like oh yeah that's an ebay seller <laughs> but i do feel like i'm happy with the strength of it and then our dimensions are going to be 22 not over 22 and this is going to be 20 here and then thickness call that an inch so 20 22 20 and then an inch all done okay Whew. all right that was a good pack um this is the bronco this is like uh it's not quite a, i think it's like 80 dollars i'm I probably am putting thumbnails so y'all can see but again for the third time in just the last few minutes y'all are going to see that exact same pack that I did. I think this is the last Hot Wheel I'm packing today. But once I find a method I like, I keep doing it over and over because then I don't have to think about what I'm going to do. All right, let me throw this in here just to get to reset this thing now. Probably about here. So, yeah, that's good. Score the old box up. And before I started doing this series, I was kind of thinking, man, do I want to do that? Is that going to make me, is that going to slow me down when I'm packing? But the truth is, whenever I pack with you guys, I'm more focused. I'm not goofing off. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not stopping and looking at something. You know, I'm not like I'm so focused that this is actually faster than when I don't have the camera on. <laughs> so this works out. I just hope that people like these videos I know there's not a whole lot of like packing content out there on YouTube and packing is one of the things that I really enjoy talking about and doing etc all right that one's done okay this is a fun little pack here we have four Jerry races in one flask in one 12 12 12 box the first thing we're going to start out with is this and i already kind of pre before i started the camera i kind of i, I did take a look real quick just to make sure this was going to work by just like they're going to ride like this and as you can see that's that's a fine fit there. Little tight, but it's good. It's good. It's gonna fit. If they were any wider, it wouldn't fit. Okay, so we have our main box built here. Knock my ruler down. Okay, so the idea here is I'm gonna bubble bubble these together. These two guys, and then gonna bubble these two guys together and then so I might you know what I, i'll probably have room if i can just bubble this guy put him on the side that'll work okay so now i have some idea 
my size. And I want to get this size down because then I can get that good cubic rate. And if I can get this to like right here, yeah, that'll be good. Show y'all something I do with these flaps too, because let me show y'all this, this fold. All right, so whenever we go to fold these, see, I mean, like it folds all the way across, and that's cool. Like I'm gonna keep two of the flaps on, but I saw it was like super tight, so I am gonna make them just a little shorter. But I like having that extra flap across the top. That's going to strengthen it. But what we don't have, we don't have extra flap on the bottom. So two of these flaps, I'm going to just cut off and take these out. Okay. And then I'm going to drop these two cutoffs that I just did right in the bottom. And that will give us double wall on the bottom. I could put a piece of tape on there to keep it together in that position. And that gives us a lot more strength from the bottom if something would hit it. All right, let's get some bubbles. And we're gonna set up our Jerry Rices like this. Okay. Do it again. Two, three. Put your Jerry Rices on your bubble wrap as you do. All right, let's take a look. All right, yep, it's just fine like that. You know what I am going to put is a little base of paper. It'll keep everything nice and stationary in there. Okay, and then we just need to throw some bubble on the flask. Flask is not heavy, so I'm not worried about the flask destroying the Jerry Rices. Okay, we're good to go. Now we just got to. I don't want to do this. I'll do it like this. Is that? Yeah, that's good enough. Huh? That looks fine. Y'all see me swapping tape back and forth. For the main holder, I'll use the three inch, and then I come back in and supplement with the two inch. Because the two inch is like super duper cheap, and the three inch is a little more expensive. Okay, here's a fairly straightforward pack a cookbook, Virginia Cookery. We probably sell. I don't know. I know what our average is. Will we sell a cookbook a day, Candace? Probably, yeah. Something like that. This this cookbook is a little a little thicker than the average cookbook. So I am going to use a box. And the reason I use boxes on cookbooks is because those plastic combs, if Melissa sees a cookbook on eBay that she wants to buy, she looks at all the photos, and the plastic combs look how they look in the photos, which I think in this case were pretty much perfect, 
and Melissa receives a cookbook with broken up combs, then Melissa is probably not going to be too happy about that. And this time, I think I am going to resize this box a little. How much, can I use this? Norm, most of the cookbooks we sell are not this thick. This is a... Oh, I can't. I can use this. This will be good. Perfect. A lot of the cookbooks we, we sell, we can just use... Like, a lot of times I use my Gemini comic mailers or something like that book was just a little bit a little bit thicker than your average cookbook okay not a high value book though I think this is only like a put a little more in here I think this is like maybe a $13 sale and I do like I do account for the value of an item whenever I'm packing it. However, I do try to pack all items so that they arrive just like they were pictured on the listing. Okay. And if I just put if I just put this like in a poly mailer and shift it, maybe put a wrap of bubble wrap on it. Uh, it would probably be fine, but I think there's a good chance the combs will get broken. Okay, that's done. Okay, this is an easy pack here. We're doing one of these uh, chest set of the gods. It's a Greek mythology chest set. We have a pawn from that going out. This isn't a bag. I'm going to take it out. Because I just want to put the little card down at the bottom there so it can sit flat. I feel like the bag would probably... You know, I'm going to put a little more bubble too. I feel like that bag would cause that card to get all crumply. I don't want to do that. One more piece of bubble. And then... Do a nice little loosey juicy wrap of paper to float it close it and whenever you get those harder packs like the uh, the big print and stuff or maybe the doll you get one of these you kind of appreciate it Okay, one more pack for the day. Uh, these are both Mercari orders. I'm gonna do them in one go. Mercari's a little different because um, on the light stuff anyway, on the heavier stuff we usually include the include the shipping, but Mercari's a little different because uh, on this kind of stuff, we use their pre-printed pre labels. So I have them ready to go right here, and I just write, I wrote the name of whatever the item is on the bottom, so I don't get them mixed up. All right. Okay, so we're going to do Boba Fett's first. We have two Boba Fett's here. Kind of scratch and dent Fett, sort of. All right, and that is, that says Boba Fett. That goes with this. and I'll put that label on in a minute I don't show the labels during the packing because I don't want to give away my buyers personal information okay let's go on to Trent this other one is a gonk by the way Alrighty, that's it, and uh, we will see y'all again tomorrow. All right, we are back at it with another day of packing. We're packing some ducks here.
from Street Fighter. We've got a 1086 box that we're gonna be using. And we have uh, the packs. The packs today are all kind of different, but none of them are um, gonna be very challenging today, I don't think, anyways. Not in my opinion. But they might be somewhat educational. Alrighty. So this is the box we're using and already did this. Ducks fit just fine in there. Going to use, I'll use three sheets of bubble. I'm gonna bubble them together. Not a highly, highly valuable thing. Um, but, as I always say, no matter the value, I still want it to get, it still should get to the customer in the condition that they saw on the listing page. So, yeah, I think these two ducks together were $20, which that's actually a pretty good bit. for ducks. Okay. This. Okay. And one more thing. Paper. And then a thank you card. And I used to, when I first started eBay, or let me let me rephrase, whenever I first got serious about eBay, because I've been, I've sold on eBay, I don't talk about it much, but I mean, I was selling like as a hobby seller occasionally on eBay since uh, 1997 or so. And at first, this one's done, by the way. Okay, this next pack is kind of interesting. And I will continue what I was talking about. But uh, this is interesting because Jamie bought a set of books and a cat collar together. They're going to ship. This was paid uh, media rate shipping. And this was not, of course. And if I ship this with this, then this cannot go media mail because part of it is not media rate however it's going to north carolina and um as long as i you know make the box reasonably small the um ground the ground advantage cubic rate will be uh probably pretty comparable to that media rate for just the books anyways it'll probably be pretty close so the other the other option there is to ship two packages or to ship one package ground advantage and i'm just going to go with the one package ground advantage i already know it's going to be the uh better way to do it financially but uh what i was saying was for years and years and years whenever i would ship an ebay order i was like well they, they don't they, all they need, all they all they want is the item, a thank you card, or you know anything else is just wasted. Uh, nobody cares about that, and I think I still believe that to be true to a certain extent. But I have changed the way I feel about you know like little thank you notes and things like that um and it, it's not because and a lot of people like in facebook groups they will say um you know i haven't noticed an increase in feedback or nobody ever mentions it or cares or anything and uh, i used to feel the same way but i also i've changed now I look at the reason that I put like a thank you note or a card or whatever, a little sticker, um, and some of the ways I pack. It's not because I'm going to get something out of it. It's just to show appreciation. 
because I do appreciate whenever I make sales on eBay, I appreciate people for shopping with us. And so the thank you card is not for me to get something, it's just for me to say simply thank you on a human level. And that's also why I like to put their name, even though it's a little weird because, you know, we are strangers, I guess. But, um, yeah, I just do it because I think I think uh, I should show the appreciation that I actually do feel, whether we get something out of it or not. And that's, that, I, I think that's just a, just part of, like, maturing you know, we're not looking at just like, what do I get out of it on every single little thing? You know, not everything has to be transactional. Some things you can do just because you want to do them. And I also don't judge anyone that doesn't choose to do that. Because, you know, like I said, it doesn't really matter. But I think it's a nice touch. And this is another case where you see this, how this, there's a little pressure here and it's kind of a, you know, it is a, a little bit of a resize so on those spots. I like to come in with the heavy hitter three inch tape vertically to handle that stress. Okay. And, uh, just for fun, let me go look at the price for this and I'll be right back. Okay, um, 784 ground advantage cubic is what this is costing. It's three pound package. Uh, if I would have shipped two separate packages, it would have been 561 for the media package and then 402 for just the little cat collar in its own packaging. Uh, so we're saving in this case $1.79 uh, by just shipping it all in one ground advantage cubic box. Okay, this is a really easy pack. This is a little uh, silver charm. And we are going to use a bubble mailer for this. And what I like to do with stuff like this is I like to make just like a little bubble ball like that. Which makes it something like this is pretty much indestructible at that point. Uh, the only other thing to say here is that um, I do like to print my labels um, before I make the envelope bulge like that just because it's easy to lay it flat when there's nothing in it and that's done next up is this uh, gospel doctrine it's a this is a Mormon book and I'm just gonna use an 864 box here this will be going Meteorite. I'll go across the three inches both ways. And uh, someone recently on another packing video said, I'm surprised you didn't make. I think I shipped two cookbooks in that video. And it said, I'm surprised you didn't uh, make your cookbooks waterproof. By like putting them in a bag or something. So in your honor, if you're watching this, I will make this one uh, waterproof to some extent anyways. But while I'm doing that, I will... I'm going to take it out of here. I will go ahead and mention that the reason I don't always make all packages waterproof is because I have found that that's not something that has ever been a problem for for us at all. Like we've never had a, a situation, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm just saying we've never had a situation where um, a, an item got damaged or something like that from water. So, and we definitely, we don't, we don't make everything watertight. And I don't feel like that should be a, uh, a requirement for packaging. 
I do, I do it sometimes. I don't do it others. Yeah, there we go. That's packed up. Okay, so now we're packing a hat. And, uh, yeah, back to what I was saying. I mean, like, I want to, I want to pack well, but I, I don't pack for every eventuality of everything that could possibly happen to a package. Um, I, 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 most of our packages make it like just fine. Like very few packages do we have problems with. I mean, it happens occasionally, but uh, I think packing for every single eventuality is kind of a waste of time. Now, having said that, I am going to bag and I always bag anything that's cloth, like this hat. The bag is not. Um, because I don't want the hat. It's an 864 box, by the way. I don't want the hat to touch the box directly because I'm kind of concerned that if I did that, then um the the parts of the hat that are touching the box could rub against it and then parts of the box could like wear off onto the hat if that makes sense so to me that is a reasonable thing to protect against whereas expecting all the packages to be watertight is maybe not and the truth is that's just not like after shipping we probably ship 40,000 packages total uh, That's never been an issue except for, I'll, I will admit one time water damage was an issue and I'll tell you all that story in a sec Okay, we're gonna pack this uh, cool grew poster One of the few comics my my dad introduced me to grew uh, when it first came out back in the 80s and He and I were both grew fans and it fits pretty well in that uh, bag and board, magazine size bag board. It's not a comic size one. But uh, yeah, back to the wet package thing. It's probably about six, seven years ago. And uh, sent an audio book to a customer. I bought a, just a ton of audio books and made up lots. They sold really well. Probably better than they would today. A lot of people use like Audible and things like that now. But anyways, um, got a message from the customer a couple weeks later. They ordered the audiobook. They went out of town for a few days. It, it poured raining. And their post, their, their carrier, their postal carrier... Uh, this is done by the way Okay, now we're packing up this um, Konami laser scope thing sold it in untested as is condition parts only whatever and I did I did notice that I was able to just like This was uh connected here. You can see it has like a like some contacts there. So taking this out It's very simple to put it back in they just and it clips in um, I think that was the right move but anyways, back to that story. The uh, customer customer stated that the mail carrier, instead of dropping the package off on the uh, like on the front porch or whatever, they threw they tossed the package into the backyard, and uh, it sat there for like three days, during which they had a storm. Package got soaked. The audiobooks all got soaked. And I understand, like, CDs are probably still good after uh, they've gotten wet. However, I also understand, that, like, nobody wants a bunch of wet stuff like that. Uh, and it wasn't really my problem. And it was media rate, so there was no insurance. Let's see if I can get it to like right here. Can I do that safely? I can. Um, th there was nothing to do like with the post office. And the fact that 
it just sat there for days. Actually, I think they got home and didn't even know it was back there <laughs> till a few days later. And uh, that was like a one-off case where waterproofing would have saved one of our packages. Um, and I, I actually did end up refunding that customer as a courtesy, even though I didn't have to. They did send photos of the wet uh, audiobook, and it was pretty nasty. And uh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever had a complaint about a wet product, and that was uh, that was probably thirty thousand sales ago. <laughs> so I, I just don't feel like it's um, I don't feel like it happens enough to. To be that vigilant and I'm, I do wrap a lot of stuff though I'm not saying I don't ever waterproof anything higher value stuff is always going to get waterproofed this for instance I'm not waterproofing this if this box sits out in the rain for a few days this thing's going to probably get ruined even more than it already is so that's the way I look at things Things that are very unlikely to happen, I don't always plan for them when I pack. Sometimes I do. And the more the more valuable something is, the more likely I am to account for an unlikely thing to happen. I do think in the packing world, uh, there is want all the packages to make it but there is such thing as except not acceptable loss that's probably a poor term but sometimes uh, stuff is just gonna happen and instead of like over like drastically over packing every single package maybe you just take care of those few times when it does happen instead that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to base all decisions we all decisions we make uh, on all on just the worst case scenario. I think that's kind of dumb. Okay, because ultimately, if we based everything on worst case scenario, we'd have to ship everything in like like one inch steel lead line boxes, right? And that that's not that's not very uh, feasible. See, like this one, like this package right here. Do I think I packed that well? I do. I think I packed that very well. Um, could something happen to it? Yes, absolutely. If something uh, catastrophic happened to it, it definitely could get damaged. But I think the way I packed it, that would be acceptable loss. Okay, here's an interesting one. Weird and wild creatures. I'm very proud of this sale because these are just sitting at the garage sale. Nobody caring about them. Nobody seeing, thinking, hey, that might have a little value to it. Maybe I should lay these. Should I lay them flat in there? Will they lay flat? I think that might be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is definitely. Uh, yeah, you know what I might even do? I'll go the extra mile here. This is a high margin sale. I'm going to go ahead and do this and here's the thing like I, I want to um, I want the cards to get there obviously in good in great condition but I also I don't want the cards to destroy the, the boxes there because the cards are pretty heavy 
But yeah, I was pretty proud of this pickup. Oh, there we go. That's good. Pretty proud of this pickup because uh, I feel like nobody else knew that these had any kind of value. I didn't know either. But I also, whenever I see something in a garage sale that I've never seen before, it just looks out of place because I've been to I've been to so many garage sales and they all have like you start to become kind of blind to a lot of things because so many garage sales they they just have like the same you just see the same things over and over and over at garage sales most garage sales are not really that different from other garage sales like they all have the you see the exact same stuff over yeah, that's good. Over and over and over. And uh, whenever I saw this, I was like, okay, that's something different. I better look that up. And sure enough, they were valuable. And they only wanted $5 for both boxes. And we got 80 something for them. Okay. And they also paid a pretty good bit of money for shipping, too. I think they paid like $17 for shipping. I'm going to use, because these are, these are pretty heavy. I'm going to use a um, Home Depot Small. I may be resizing it. Not sure yet. I'm happy too because now we have a another product, another item in our memory banks to look for. And at this point, we're not adding that many items every day to our memory banks because like I said, we see the same things over and over and over. So even if you've been doing this for a while, it, it helps to remain uh, curious. Okay. So I'm going to have to float these a bit. Something else I think I want to do. I think I want to put one more piece of cardboard in the bottom. Let's see. What do I have? You know what? I have a cutoff from a previous packing job right here. This would be good. Put that in there. That'll provide a little more strength to that box. Okay. Now. I'm gonna fill, it, fill her up with paper. Pretty good bit. And depending on how heavy an item is, that kind of dictates how much I scrunch up the paper. There we go. I think that's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. riding on a cloud. There we go. Okay, and now it's going to fill in on all the sides. Especially on a higher margin sale like this, where we're we're netting, uh, I don't know, we're we're netting at least sixty dollars profit on this sale. Okay, there we go. I look at packing as defending that defending that profit. Because if something goes wrong, we'll lose it. Okay. And now, I probably am going to resize it down just a tad. Let's see if I have another piece. 
What do I have up here? Do I have anything? I don't have anything like that. I do have... I do have these. And then I'm going to use them. It's like this. And I don't want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna size it down just a, just a hair. I'm gonna freehand. Let's see. I'm gonna go to here. Any bit you can size something down. This is gonna make the box look a little wonk because I'm freehanding it. Yeah, and I'm leaving just a little bit of room for paper on top. Let's see. Oh, I didn't write my thank you card. This is a, it's going to be kind of a difficult thank you card. So, okay. That's good. This name is kind of tough to spell. I'm going to give it a shot. I think this is probably going to a freight forwarder because it is going to Delaware. Okay, let's see. Thank you. X I A N G. H-U-G. There we go. And there's two, there, uh, let's, see. there's a couple of different cities. There's one in, uh, I think Miami has a lot of freight forwarding going on. Uh, Delaware has a lot of freight forwarding going on. I think, um, Portland maybe. Uh, Y'all help me out in the comments. Or some other places where there's but there's a ton of freight forwarding that happens came off there's a ton of freight forwarding that happens out of uh, Delaware for whatever reason and I'm not not exactly sure why and I'm, I'm just mentioning it I, I don't have a point there because uh, in general I, I've never, never really experienced very many issues with freight forwarders. Not, not any, uh, not at any higher of a rate than I do from any other type of sale. I'm gonna bring this all the way around, tape to tape, right here. Here we go. All righty, uh, one more. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give it a belly wrap right here. I already did one there. Oh well, wasting tape. There we go. All done. Uh, printing up the about to print up the label now. In case you all are cu curious, buyer paid seventeen sixty and uh, UPS ground, but I'm actually going to send this uh, ground advantage for 1660 and I don't have to go drop the package off okay next up uh, this lot of Star Wars figs and it's put together some were low value some were higher value and poor condition and she made a lot for $50 Good little sale. This is on Macari, by the way. Two pieces of bubble here. And I'm using a 644 box this time. How's that feel? And I'm going to do this. $50 order. So do this. Thank you, Robert. He's in there. And 
that's a wrap. And last thing for today is Humpty Dumpty ornament. Kind of cool. I think... No, I guess... I, I thought maybe he had like a pole thing or something. No, we had a Santa Claus that did that, I think, that we sold. That That is just a little stationary. It's cool, though. It's a vintage little wooden guy. Uh, 644 box. This is the other... Mercari sale and very simple pack with good paper. Nice loose wrap on Humpty. Don't want Humpty to get broken, that would be ironic. Unless they happen to well, all the kings, all the kings something, all the kings men couldn't put Humpty back together again, right? Uh, that's it, and that is it for today. And look what we did. Hope y'all enjoyed. I'll see y'all in the next one.